All right. Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Keith Flynn. I'm the director of digital marketing here at West USA Realty. Really excited to have you guys on board again for the second in our series of social media classes. Um, this one being personal branding for real estate professionals. And uh, really happy that you guys are joining us this morning. I hope everyone's doing well. You're in great spirits. I know it's been a crazy week, um, but we're having fun over here uh, cranking out some webinars and online content so that all of our agents can stay connected with us and hear the latest and what's happening, not here only at the brokerage, but what we can do to help you be successful with your business. So I wanted to jump right in this morning with personal branding, um, get into just kind of like breaking down what uh, the difference is between branding and marketing, how we can implement it into your marketing strategy. And uh, I always like starting off my slides with something fun, something uh, creative. My favorite quote, I read this book, uh, Dr. Seuss with my son all the time. And my favorite one about personal branding, I thought this quote was very, very uh, relevant. Today, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. And I, uh, I think uh, Dr. Seuss always has some good ones. And so I wanted to add that one in for you guys just to think about that. Uh, like all my slides, this is being recorded. So if you're not able to continue or stay with us the rest of the hour, um, you can always jump back on to our social media and we will be posting this in a recorded version after the fact. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to drop in, drop into the box on the right hand side there and shoot the question over. Happy to answer it as it comes in. Um, if you do hear me stutter or slur at any point during the webinar, just know that I had a dentist appointment this morning and that would be my lip reconnecting with my face as the local anesthetic wears off. So I wasn't, uh, wasn't thinking about that one <laughs> when I scheduled these two things side by side. But none of, nonetheless, we're going to have fun with it. Uh, we're going to crank through this here. Branding versus marketing. Wanted to just put this out there so you see them side by side. Your marketing is about creating a demand for your product or service building a brand that people can recognize and one that would get them interested in buying and encouraging them to take action. Whether you're a product or a service, um, your marketing is going to really push people towards why they should use you and consider you as a realtor of choice. Branding, uh, that is the image of your company. That is something that, uh, that your buyer, your consumer takes away what their understanding is about uh, your product or service. And that's a combination of many different factors. Your reputation, your colors, your logos, your visuals, what other people are saying about you, word of mouth advertising is ultimately the branding. And just to enhance on that a little bit more, uh, this side by side comparison uh, for marketing, uh, that is when you state that you are a trusted real estate professional. Uh, your branding is what your consumer says about you, and that is, I hear you're a trusted real estate professional. So with successful marketing, uh, great reputation, and someone who is an expert in their field and what they do, in the end, you want that positive branding message to come away from that. And that is in the form of your consumer, your buyers, your sellers, choosing you over someone else because of your combination of marketing and your positive branding message. So we're going to jump into just some of the specifics about these two versus each other. On the left-hand side there in the sphere, you see when it comes to branding, some of the things you want to have jump out, uh, look at and take a look at in consideration for your branding. And whether you're rebranding now or you're getting into it, um, this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to really take a step back and think about what it is that you've either been doing that's not working or you have been doing something that is working and how can I replicate it again? How can I continue to build on that? And it may feel like we have a little bit of a downtime right now. People want to withdraw, pull back in. In our recent climate, I know folks aren't considering much in the way of like activity, but this is a perfect time for you to not take your foot off the gas, but put your foot on the gas and really assess what you've been doing. Maybe there's some holes. Maybe you've never considered a font or a logo, but uh, these are all uh, opportunities for you to enhance and continue to build your brand. And I highly encourage it. And so if you're listening today, you're obviously taking the first step forward. That's awesome. Really excited about providing the value for you here. And as we go through the horn here on the left-hand side, branding is going to culminate a lot of different um, choices for you when it comes to how your voice is, your vision, the way you speak to people, believe it or not, your logo, uh, whether or not you have a tagline. I've seen, you know, Keith sells homes or best AZ real estate guy, you know, any number of taglines, mantras that folks may have may not be important to you. Something to consider when it comes to branding. 
uh, your expectations. You know, what are you what are your expectations as a real estate agent, not only of yourself, but for your client, uh, your fonts, your colors. If you're choosing a color palette that you want to have for your brand, um, we've got a few different agents who uh, have adopted some really cool color combinations, and they you see that resonate through all of their marketing. It's called brand continuity. No matter where you advertise or where you're at, there's always an underlying theme or a color theme, and people start to recognize that. Uh, your promises. What are you promising to your clients? Your visual style, your personality, and again, your reputation, as I mentioned earlier. Now, on the marketing side of things, when you go to implement these things, you've got campaigns that you can think about. Uh, what are you doing in the form of a campaign? Are you running any online advertising, Facebook ads, um, Snapchat, you, uh, uh, Instagram stories, you name it? There's a number of different pl digital platforms where you can launch campaigns to get some more exposure for you and your clients. Uh, your inbound and outbound whether you're waiting for calls to come in through advertising or you're making outbound calls, that is considered marketing because you are marketing yourself. Advertising in general, um, offers you may have, uh, working with clients or vendors that may offer some additional opportunities or additional value savings for your clients. Uh, the promotions that you're running, uh, what media are you choosing? Are you running uh, radio ads, TV, news, print, magazine, digital? A uh, number of different mediums to choose when it comes to advertising. Sales calls. Um, if you're making any call up on call sales calls, that's another consideration when it comes to marketing. Your search engine optimization for those of you who have websites. Uh, if you're optimizing your sites so that you are showing up higher ranking in Google uh, or any of the search engines that folks are looking for you as an agent, just know that when folks do come across you and they're considering you to be a, um, if considering you for you to be a realtor of choice, they're um, doing a search for you. They're going to go to Instagram. They're going to go to Facebook. They're going to be on Google and they're going to find out more about you. See what your activity level is. And if you're someone who gives the appearance that they're busy, they're meeting with clients, uh, that all adds to your SEO and your search engine optimization to really drive you up higher in the rankings. And then, of course, leads. We're all looking for leads, whether it's referral or we're paying for leads or we're finding leads from uh, past clients. Uh, if you're part of the inbound sales program here at West USA, leads is important as well. And uh, that would cap off your branding versus marketing. So some benefits for personal branding. Uh, you know, an effective brand uh, has a lot of influence when it comes to consumers deciding if they want to use you or not. And so if you are having an effective brand, a personal brand that has all the boxes checked, then you can look forward to a steady stream of ideal clients. Clients that are higher caliber, higher income, uh, higher education, your more qualified buyers are going to work with someone who's professional, who's a, an, an industry expert, a neighborhood expert, a neighborhood mayor, you not only know about the homes and the process, but you also know about the area of town. So you can expect to see a higher stream of ideal clients for your business. Um, you'll be rewarded with partnerships. And when I say partnerships, that's opportunity for you to work with the best and the best in the industry when it comes to home warranty, vendors, uh, your uh, loan officers, title reps. Uh, you're going to uh, reap that reward because they're going to want to work with you. They see that you're doing a, a, a level of business that they want to be a part of. And of course, naturally, they're going to want to hitch their wagon. Um, your leadership opportunities. We've got a number of our top performers here at West USA Realty who um, shine day in and day out. And when they do, they are taking advantage of opportunities to be a mentor, to be a coach. Uh, they're tapped to be part of panels. They're tapped to contribute to uh, our magazine, Westwards. They have an opportunity to uh, share and give back to other agents who are just getting into the business and really differentiate themselves from everyone else. And so with that, leadership opportunities comes prestige and an opportunity for you to share with like-minded folks. When I, and that's number four here, greater mind share. You're going to find yourself working with and, and, and conversing with a higher caliber of agent, uh, and that's really going to help you out when it comes to personal branding. Um, your association with the market niche, so anybody in your area, communities, nonprofit, your personal brand, again, will be seen by just about everybody that's even not only in real estate or has an intent to buy or looking in the near future, but other folks who work or service the real estate injuries, industry, they will start to see you as an agent of choice. And because of your personal branding, again, you're going to benefit from that. Of course, credibility comes along with that when you're successful and you have a great brand. Recognition and prestige, as I mentioned, of course, at the end of the day, you will have a higher perceived value as a real estate agent. And so that's why it's very important to focus on your brand 
and really jump outside of just more than a logo because your brand is not a logo. Your brand is a culmination of many different things when it comes to um, your marketing efforts. And a brand is a, is a collection of perceptions within your client's mind. Uh, in their mind, the consumer, what they think about you, what they've heard, a culmination of many different factors. And if you're doing it successfully, then naturally they're going to like you and want to work with you. So beyond what I was just talking about, your brand is not a logo. A brand is more than that. It's your strategy. It's why you do what you do. If whether you're looking to stay um, in remodels, new homes, flipping, probate, uh, whatever the whatever the niche you decide, you know your strategy and how you approach it says a lot about your brand. Um, your call to actions: What are you telling your clients to do at the end of your social media posts or at the end of a video? Are you telling your client, sharing with them what you want them to do? What's the next step? Uh, how your action, your call to action, is implemented into your marketing strategy it says a lot about your brand as well. Your customer service, you know, uh, uh, is someone calling your phone and is rings, rings and rings and they don't even get to you or from a broker standpoint, um, if we have, uh, you know, someone call in and no one can answer the question and it gets past the next person, it gets past the next person, you know, that that level of handoff can start to look uh, be a negative for you with your customer service. And so how you uh, how you answer your calls, how quickly do you call back your customer? Uh, you know, not everybody has to take the test text message at two o'clock in the morning. I know I ran my uh, real estate agent through the ringer when we were buying and selling our home, but he's a close friend, so he was willing to let it go. But uh, you know, are you timely? Are you responsive? And are you answering the questions for your customer? That says a lot about your brand. How you speak to people. Are you uh, monotone and boring or are you rude or do you feel like you're being put out if someone calls you and has a question, even if it's a quick, you know, 30 second response? How you speak to people says a lot about your brand. Uh, you know, people want to engage with uh, energetic and knowledgeable and uh, agents who project confidence. And so if you put that out there, naturally people are going to be drawn to that and want to work with you. And that, again, adds into your brand. So a whole array of communication tools. Um, you know, if you're having an open house and you need to use the bathroom real quick, shut the door. Are you just writing a sticky note on the door that says be back in five minutes? Or maybe did you make a nice little eight and a half by 11 branded? Hey, in the restroom, back in five minutes, West USA logo. Maybe there's your headshot in the corner. You know, uh, take it to the next level. Uh, are you using acrylics in your open house? Are they sitting on your island? Do you have professional marking materials laid out? Uh, or are you winging it with a black and white copy? You know, a lot of how you communicate is important. It really ties into your brand. Uh, your people is important. Um, whether you're on a team or not, uh, who you work with, your vendors, you know, technically they're not on your team. You don't have a team of agents, but you are working with vendors. So you should consider them your team as well. And people are judging your brand based on the people that you do business with. And if you're going to send over, uh, you know, if you're going to have a loan officer or title rep work with them, if you're going to have home warranty or home inspection, you know, are you working with high caliber people? Because at the end of the day, they're going to represent you because you are the uh, you are the agent on this contract. And so they're, they're saying a lot about you as well. So, you know, vet your people out, make sure you're working with high caliber people. They will play into your brand, your facilities. Uh, you know, not a lot of us have our own home offices or offices that people are visiting. But when I say facilities, you know, if someone comes into a brokerage or to an office, you know, the lights on, there's just someone at the front door to greet them. Um, well, let me turn that down. Um, you have uh, your facility, your home away from home, or your work office away from home could be, you know, the open house. You know, are you getting in there early and walking through the home? Uh, you know, are the counters clean? You know, there, there's no creepy crawlies behind the toilet. <laughs> you know, we want to walk with that house one or two times, make sure that everything is dialed in and you're putting your best foot forward. So treat your homes like your facilities. You know, make sure there's a, a hand, there's toilet paper, hand sanitizer, you name it. If they're going to use it, make sure it's there. Um, and of course, at the end, this last one, yes, your logo is a part of your visuals. It is important too. But I want you guys to put your mind frame around all these other um, uh, pieces that fall into your brand and think more than just a logo and your fonts. So this is a great conversation I like to have with my son. Uh, I always explain to him, you know, we are all brands more now than ever because of social media. We have an opportunity to really put ourselves out there. And everything we do throughout the day really defines who we are as a person. Um, 
for, for those of us who are very active on social media, how we speak, what we talk about, uh, if, we're, if we're always negative, if we're taking photographs of the license plate of the person who ran us off the road and then putting them on blast on social media, that defines your brand. Um, you know, you want to really think about the po the positivity that you really should be putting out there, both on personal and your business page. Because as an agent, that is a unique situation that we are in. We are our brand. Our face is our brand. They are hiring us. And so uh, what you put out there is very important. Um, thank God <laughs> there was no social media around when I was a kid because I'm Probably would be doing five to 10 right now because <laughs> of criminating evidence, but all honesty and, uh, and joking aside, um, you know, social media is important now and never. And I've had this conversation with my son and that's him on the left. Uh, he likes to steal my cell phone and take selfies of himself. Uh, that's as far as they ever go. Uh, but he, uh, he, I did find this one entertaining. And so I did have a conversation with him and I try to set his mind framed back to a day when, um, when word of mouth was really important, you know, what the next person said about you. Uh, when you left the room, what are they saying about you when you leave the room? Is it positive? Is it good? Or is it negative and, and, and something that you can fix? And I explained to him that way back in the day before social media, you know, word of mouth was important for us. Um, a great example would be the movie industry. It, often, you know, you would go see a movie and if that movie was a dud, it took three, four five weeks for it to spread word of mouth as you ran into friends, saw family members, uh, saw an old buddy for you to share that that movie was terrible. But now we're literally in the movie theater texting and tweeting and kicking out our review before the movie's even over. So now it really forced the movie industry to step up and put out a better product. Now, there's still some pretty bad movies out there, and I'm sure that's just what it is. But at the end of the day, um, communication is shared much more faster than it used to be. And so I explained to him that, hey, buddy, moving forward, you're six years of age now. What you do with your social media when we get to that point in life, you need to be very cautious about it. And we don't want to put too much stuff out there because you want to be very guarded and very private about who you are, and especially growing up as a, at a, as a young age or as, at a young age with kids. They're very influential with, with what their friends and family say. So I just wanted to set that frame with your brand. It's not too late. A lot of us still, uh, still have an opportunity to put out our positive message and change our brand if we find a lot of negative happening. So uh, your brand is is um, uh, is uh, your brand is not yourself. It can be assured that others are doing it right. If you're not branding yourself, if you're not putting out your message, your vision statement, you can be assured that someone else is doing it for you. And that's usually in the form of a review or a negative comment or someone who's worked with you who didn't have a great experience. And I don't know if anybody remembers this one. This one's a little bit back in the day, but this. Um, uh, this is the old Mac, the old Apple commercials, right? I don't know if you guys remember this, but the guy on the right would walk out and say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Mac. And then the other guy would walk out and say, I'm a PC. And so these were Apple commercials and they were brilliant uh, a number of years ago, back in the mid, mid 2000s. And they were putting out, basically Apple was branding PCs. They were telling us what PCs were. And in this case, slow, clunky, big, they took up a lot of space on the desk or you had the tower underneath and so apple was young hip lightweight portable you could take it with you and so apple did a fantastic job of branding their competition and 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 so pc was not out there really putting it out there and so apple was dominating them when it came to your home computing device and so um Five questions for you. I typically have a handout at this point, and since we're in a virtual state right now, I wanted to let you know that if you email me at keith at westusa.com, that's K-E-I-T-H at westusa.com, I'll be happy to shoot over the PDF. It's a worksheet that basically takes you through some thought processes and questions about your brand and getting outside of what you traditionally would consider a brand and really diving deep into um, some thought provoking questions and, and putting together a better product for yourself. Uh, so what are your goals? What are your goals in being a real estate agent? Why are you doing what you do? Um, what do you value? What is it about the home and selling process, home buying and selling process uh, about being an agent? Do you value? Do you, um, do you uh, value finding your client the best forever home um, or helping a, a, a distressed seller get out of their home and finding them an investor? What is it that you value? And are you putting that out there? Uh, what are you passionate about? This doesn't have to be about real estate. This could be just about life in general. You know, we are drawn to people who are positive, energetic, uh, likable. And so uh, defining what you're passionate about and using that question 
to tailor your social media content is huge because I've always told everybody, stop with the just listed, just sold, and not giving me anything else. Talk about you, what you're passionate about. What nonprofits do you work with? What differentiates you from your competition? Why do you know this neighborhood better than anybody? How long have you lived there? Um, defining what you're passionate about will draw people to you. We're, we have a lot of like-minded folks, and when you, when you find those like-minded folks, they're going to want to tag tag onto you, and they're going to want to share you and your content with their fans, friends, and family. Uh, again, what motivates you? What gets you up in the morning? You know, what uh, what gets you going? What gets you excited? Again, use that with uh, that through your content. And then what makes you remarkable? Uh, the wow factor, right? What is your wow factor? What differentiates you from another agent? Do you have many years on, on, uh, of experience? Are you somebody who has tapped into a niche and are able to uh, you know, use that to your advantage, whether it's sports, hiking, outdoor? What is it about you that differentiate yourself from your competition? And so five quick rules for you here when it comes to creating your content and creating a brand and then putting it out there. Uh, number one is be diligent. Uh, whatever you decide to do, look around you and do your homework. Make sure that you're well-informed and a, are a true neighborhood mayor and be diligent about that. Um, be consistent, not constant. When I say consistent, we suggest, and I, and I see the most successful real estate agents do this, is when they choose a day of the week to talk about a different topic. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be about real estate. Tuesday and Thursday will be maybe a, a lifestyle piece or a community outreach piece. Um, break it up, but be consistent to the point where now your consumer will anticipate and know what content they can look for on that day. Monday's a motivational, Tuesday's something funny about you, maybe you're an avid hiker and you're hitting all the trails and you're doing a little piece at the top of the mountain about what's great about living in Phoenix. Um, you know, if you've got an out-of-state buyer, you're really showcasing the state and why it's great to live there and you can leverage that video um, and that content whenever you meet a new client. Um, be relevant. So obviously what it is your content talks about, um, make sure it's relevant to what your expertise is and what you're doing. Uh, be interesting. This is a huge one. I know this is hard for a lot of people. We've got a lot of introverts who love real estate, but they don't really don't put themselselves out there. And no one says you have to be fake and, and gen being genuine is super important in addition to being interesting. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity for you folks to use content and to put out your content, but not always have to feel like you need to be someone who's out and about and loud and obnoxious all the time. You can just be you, um, but try to be interesting because people will want uh, to naturally be drawn to that. And most importantly, as I mentioned, being genuine, be yourself. Uh, going back to the first slide, just be you. We uh, consumers love to see behind the scenes stuff. They love vulnerable moments. You know, that video doesn't have to be overly produced. It can be just about you jumping in the car after an open house. Maybe you had a good question flip that video on and paraphrase what we what you were just asked. Let us know what the content um, that you just shared with a potential buyer or seller. And that is an awesome opportunity for you to give back and be yourself. So um, when it comes to building an effective personal brand, five little steps that I like to uh, share with our agents. Number one is, 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 is take inventory. Uh, when I say inventory, I don't mean what are available homes on the market. When I say take inventory, look around you and see who's around you. Who is in your circle of influence? Who is your, in, your, in your circle of close friends and family? We all have amazing talents, and there could be someone around you who possesses a talent that can help you get your brand out there. Um, whether that's a great copywriter, someone who has a visual eye, you know, we know someone in the family who excels at, 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 at a particular aspect to business or marketing. Uh, my mom prides herself on being able to hang anything on the wall and not have to use a level. So, and I'm like, okay, mom, go for it. Does that look good? <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I'm the kind of guy who wants to bring in all the groceries in one shot, you know, <laughs> I don't want to make trips. So I've got 16 bags in each hand. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm obviously kidding, but you know, for the most part, look around you and see who has, uh, abilities around you that can help you be successful. I guarantee you anybody who's been successful in life did not do it alone. And so, um, reach out. Uh, show some vulnerability and ask for help. You know, we're here for you on a, from a broker standpoint. And naturally, you have friends around you who are probably like-minded and can help you uh, succeed at your business. Uh, develop a brand plan and keep working on it. And that's the worksheet that I'll send out to you guys. Um, 
once you set it, don't forget it. Always go back, look at your brand. Lots of things change. I mean, we're in a crazy environment right now with obviously all, all that's happening in the recent news. So we're always going to have to pivot and shift. Times are always changing. And so your brand needs to as well, whether you're, you're recrafting a new message or number three, your identity is changing. Maybe uh, you're taking on some new responsibilities. Keep your plan close by and always go back to it. See what's working and what's not. Your next step is choosing the right tools and channels. And I'll get into that in the next few slides. Where do you need to be? Where should you be advertising? I know I get that question a lot from folks in class. I'm not sure where I need to be. And so we'll cover that here in the next few. And then, of course, like all marketing, you definitely want to measure what you're doing and then look at the analytics and repeat what's successful, change what is not. So as I mentioned on slide number four before, or uh, step number four, uh, where are the channels? Where do I need to be advertising? Uh, I get a lot of agents are asking, you know, where, uh, where, where should I be? Well, honestly, it's not so much where you should be, it's where is your audience, right? Where is your customer base? Um, if you're looking for, um, you know, your first time home buyer, which is the millennials are our largest first, first time home buyers now, or you're looking for someone who's uh, uh, retiring, downsizing, you know, where your audience is, is important and that's where you need to be. So reverse engineer your audience. Where they are is where you need to go. So figure out who you're targeting, right? Uh, whether they're in their 30s, as I alluded to a minute ago, um, 30 and under crowd. Um, they're on Snapchat and Instagram. And while um, our first time home buyers are going to be in the older millennials, 38, 39s, and lower, they are our target demographic when it comes to first time home buyers. Um, and it's actually gone up since this, but uh, it's about 32% now. But last I checked through um, Statica, 32% of registered real estate agents, or licensed real estate agents, are on uh, Instagram. Only 32%. That's crazy to think that f over 59% of your Instagram users are millennials. So if that is your target audience, I highly recommend you start jumping in and starting to use Instagram to help with your brand messaging and your marketing. And of course, I teach a class on that too. And so look forward to that coming up in the next few weeks. Um, if you're someone who's going after the 40 plus crowd, uh, they are the fastest growing demographic on Pinterest. And Pinterest is an awesome visual platform. If you haven't used Pinterest, I highly recommend it. I use it for a lot of uh, cooking. I love to cook. And so I find a lot of great recipes on there. But some very successful real estate agents that I know are using Pinterest because they create interest graph boards that are around any number of topics in the real estate industry. Again, real estate is a very visual industry and so is Pinterest and they are a natural fit. I mean, social media in general is. But when you get into Pinterest, uh, you can create boards around curb appeal, beautiful front doors, remodeled backyards, um, backsplashes, uh, beautiful master baths, you name it. And there's so many different aspects to the real estate industry. It's a no brainer for real estate agents to use Pinterest because Pinterest can help you showcase not only what a potential buyer or seller could do to enhance the property of their home, but it can also showcase your past examples and your past work. If someone um, wants to see some examples of past homes where maybe uh, the homeowner was resistant on making some changes, but once they followed your advice and they did, then the home uh, closed very quickly or they had you know three offers within the first week, you can show Pinterest and show, here's the home I'm speaking of, here's my experience, and this is why I'm definitely an agent of choice. Uh, your over 55 crowd uh, is the fastest growing demographic on Facebook, except for my mother. Uh, she will not get on Facebook. Um, and so uh, she's definitely not part of that graphic, but they are a fast growing demographic on Facebook. So if that is your audience you're looking for, then and you're on Facebook and you're doing it right, then you're in a good spot. So uh, earlier, we talked about channels. Where should I be? There's so many choices. And I know this can be overwhelming for a lot of agents. I have a lot of folks in class, you know, they get done and they're like, when am I going to find all the time to do this? Uh, you know, I have to still be an agent. Um, you know, and just remember when you find yourself deciding where to be and then the content you're going to create for those channels, just remind yourself that this is social pros prospecting. No different than if you were face to face in a crowd, shaking hands, uh, or doing the uh, coronavirus elbow bump, I hope at this point. Um, <laughs> if you're in a crowd or you're meeting folks, it's natural to uh, network with them and mingle with them. Going online, same thing. This is social prospecting. You're just now able to do it at scale. It's amazing how many people you can get in front of and get in contact with 
when you use online advertising and online social media. Your digital footprint is going to move a lot faster than if you were just feet on the street guerrilla uh, marketing approach. Website, if you do have a website, I hope you're using the blogging capabilities on there. This is an op awesome opportunity for you to establish yourself as a real estate agent, a in the know agent uh, using your website. Uh, will help you with that. And of course, naturally, when folks are doing searching for you, they're searching uh, the search engines to see if you are, in fact, a agent who knows what they're doing and they see you have a website that adds legitimacy and trust. Um, podcast. This is a medium, um, no different than what we're doing right now. Obviously, there's a webinar, so it's podcast with slides. Um, podcasting, huge Gr growing demographic for 2020. Uh, it, recent stats showed just before the end of the year that 50% of businesses were going to consider podcasting and there's another forum and avenue to get their message out there. Uh, you can actually break down podcasts into flash briefings. If anybody has a smart device in their home, uh, you can sign up for flash briefings, which is a, a, a basically like a micro um, podcast or a short form podcast. I know a lot of agents who will kick out daily tips, ideas, uh, little pieces about market stats. And so in the morning, you can wake up and say, hey, uh, Alexa, play my flash briefings today. And for whichever flash briefing you sign up on or for, she'll actually start playing that for you. And as an agent, you can use this as a fantastic way to get into um, your uh, potential buyer and seller's homes, and they'll start to listen to your hyper niched content for that community. And in fact, we actually have an agent who's um, smart, really smart on this one. She has a podcast and then also does flash briefings. She gives out a Alexa dot or a um, an Echo dot uh, at, in closing in her gift basket. So uh, she gives a little, you know, they're 20, 30 bucks now. They're really inexpensive, but on a, on a Black Friday deal or a Prime Day deal, you can get them very inexpensive. She'll buy six or seven of them, puts them in her closing gift basket. And, and then with it has a little card that says, once you get, you know, your Alexa up and running, uh, feel free to subscribe to my flash briefings where I talk about everything from uh, increasing the value of your home after you've closed. One thing you can do each month to increase the value of your home, contractors to work with, partners with landscapers, uh, awesome opportunity for you to stay top of mind with past clients. And, uh, you know, naturally they're going to use it. And so um, at the same time, you will have an opportunity for them to remember you the next time they have a referral. Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, under social networks, um, a lot of opportunity for you there as well. Again, just really depends on where your audience is going to be. Uh, another channel for you to use for when your brand is set and you're ready to start pushing this out. Uh, Facebook events, um, great for open houses. In fact, I'm going to do a um, I'm going to do a segment on this uh, next week when I do a Facebook uh, um, Facebook basics. I kind of jump into well, I do jump into Facebook events and using the Facebook events tab to create open houses for your listings and for your open house opportunities. Um, and then are, are you, uh, are you using Google, my business? Uh, this is another class that I teach as well. Google, my business. Uh, if you're not using it, you, I highly recommend that you do so. Um, there's been a lot of features that Google, my business has added to that, um, that, uh, listing. And when I say listing, it's your business listing, whether you're a brick or mortar or you're, um, all over the Valley, uh, you can designate the areas in town that you are an agent for, but through the use of adding zip codes, uh, but creating a Google My Business listing so that when folks search for you via Google, you will you will come up as a real estate agent and it will showcase you in the neighbor neighborhoods in which you've chosen. Not to mention uh, another area for you to um, put your contact information in there, put your photos of past clients you've worked with. And then uh, that all indexes, just like if I were driving to look for a restaurant in an area, a neighborhood, um, if I search for food, 85026, uh, if I'm search real estate agent and I just pop in the zip code, your goal, and if you're using Google My Business correctly, is to be one of the top agents on that search engine results page. So um, becoming a real estate influencer, when you're uh, – Brand and marketing is off and running. You have an opportunity to become a real estate influencer. And as I mentioned earlier, with millennials, uh, they are very apt to making decisions based on um, people that they uh, find on Instagram. So there's a, a, a 
pretty interesting statistic about over 60% of uh, millennials who are using Instagram have said that they've learned about a new product or service from Instagram. Um, so it, it's an awesome opportunity for you to get some exposure for yourself as an agent and just know that millennials are using us to find influencers. And that could be uh, an influencer for, uh, you know, gym equipment or, uh, you know, protein shakes or any number of different products. But as you as an agent, if you're using Instagram to its best and using all aspects of Instagram and you're doing it well, millennials will watch that and they will um, give you credit and, and consider you a, a, a influencer or a neighborhood mayor. And uh, so if you're, when your brand, you're putting the brand together and you're starting to push your content out there and your marketing efforts um, and a millennial is your target, I highly recommend if you're not doing it, get good at Instagram because they are on there and they're using it to establish a lot of things like, are you likable? Are you someone that they would want to work with? Are you an expert? Are you a thought leader? Are you uh, someone who connects with local communities and events? Are you truly showcasing that you are the in the know agent for that neighborhood? And so this poll pulls right into uh, nicely into content that we were putting out. And, and, and I wanted to, I added this slide in, um, in, in light of what's all what's happening with all of us out there um, in the world right now. And I want to encourage you guys to, um, you know, take advantage of this opportunity to be a leader. Um, you have an opportunity to um, look around you and see what others are doing in the industry and remember that uh you know they're scared too you know um and we and we uh i've had a lot of agents reach out to me and they're like hey what do i put out there and not offend anybody right now um you know i, I don't want to say the wrong thing because it's 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 very it's very topical right now for us and we're all dealing with the with current climate in different ways and so you as an agent you have an opportunity uh since we're thinking about our brand and we're thinking about our marketing efforts right now I put down a couple snippets here, some 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 kind of uh, one-liners that can help open up your social media post, and I kind of give you guys an idea of how you can, you know, uh, we don't want to ignore the issue that's happening, but this is an opportunity for you to be a positive uh, person in this uh, in this climate we're now. This we're in a, a, an immense amount of change, and. Um, um, more now than ever, people want to connect with their community. Uh, they want to collaborate. You know, we. We are, you know, people are self-isolating. Folks are being asked to stay home. And, and even though we feel isolated, we're not alone. Like we're all in this together. And so you as an agent for your neighborhood, you have an awesome opportunity to step out there, put yourself out there and be that connector. Let the community know that you're there for them. And that can be in form of many different ways. And so uh, this these snippets here for you are to use to start crafting your messages. And I just put down some examples. But number one. You know, at West USA Realty, or if you're a team, or you, uh, we're staying vigilant in our efforts to help our community with serve, uh, communities that we serve during this uncertain time. Take it from there and figure out what can you do to uh, help spread the word, the message. Um, you know, if if uh, if something's been restocked at the grocery store and you're aware of it, be the first one to share it in the closed group on your Facebook neighborhood community. Uh, I or we want to help now more than ever. You know, uh, it's okay to be human, but um, let them know everything's going to be okay. Be a reassuring voice. Uh, you're again, you're you're the in the know uh, neighbor. You're the in the know mayor for the for that neighborhood, and so this is an awesome opportunity for you to start that. This might feel awkward since we're in the middle of a pandemic, but share some re uh, reinforcing and encouraging words or thoughts or wisdom. Uh, in times of uncertainty, people tend to do this. Uh, we want to encourage you to do this instead. And whatever that message is, again, make sure to keep it positive. And these are nice, subtle ways of acknowledging the issue, but we don't, you don't need to be telling anybody about, you know, uh, uh, statistics on pandemic or areas that are flaring up or, you know, anything like that. We're getting a lot of that information right now, hyper niche focused around your community. Now more than ever is the time to choose community connection, collaboration. Uh, if there's a food bank in your area, what are you doing to encourage the people to help out? Um, maybe you've, you've spoken with the food bank director, you've maybe spoken with a nonprofit or the church. Uh, maybe someone's going to do, you know, mass or services via Facebook live, you know, that's that way we can minimize social contact. Um, be that person who shares that information. Uh, this is your chance to really get out there and be the, the, the voice that's positive and will connect. 
um, people uh, are, are going to remember that when we get through this on the other end. Uh, with all the uncertainty right now, I wanted to offer blank. Um, if someone, if I have a senior citizen who can't leave the house, can I go to the store for you and help get you those items? Uh, I mean, it's fantastic that the grocery stores have done a, a first hour of the morning to allow our senior citizens to get in there. But if there's something you can do to take it a step further, whatever that offer is to you within your comfortable ra comfortability and your range, then share that in your message. I know many of you are suddenly uh, living life a bit differently, and here's how I can help. Um, and if you're willing to do that, that's a great start to a, a social media post. Need a little break from the politics and virus news? Here's how we can help. And so I just put together these timely snippets for you guys to just you know address a lot of the questions that I've been getting because we don't want to ignore that it's happening, but we also we want to get away from just listed, just sold. Hey, celebrate your small accomplishments, but let's do something above and beyond that's going to help our friends, our families, and our neighbors. So do's and don'ts. Just got a quick little rundown here. Do's and don'ts for you. Uh, do's. Um, you know, moving forward, uh, now, tomorrow, six months, a year from now, audit the people and the companies that you can uh, that see and read uh, and work with you. Uh, check out the public view of your social media. Has anybody Googled themselves recently? I know I do, uh, just to make sure that you know uh, I'm in control of what's out there. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to share. Well, I don't know if I'm fortunate enough, but I share the sa same name as a as a poet. Uh, his name is Keith Flynn as well. He's a poet and a musician, so he pretty much dominates uh, the uh, images on Google. So uh, I don't try to fight him on that one, but I just make sure there's nothing out there that's bad about me. Um, search yourself on Google, see that what you uh, what's out there, and then take it a step further when it comes to dues. Uh, your opportunity to manage your reputation is is uh, is awesome you can do and create a google alert uh go to google alerts uh you can just google google alerts and you can set up a search agent they will let you know anytime the keyword phrase your name uh shows up on the internet moving forward they'll email you and let you know what that is um I get an alert maybe once every few months. Uh, usually it's there's a sports writer named Keith Flynn. So just anytime an, a, a customer may put a review out there about you, good or bad, you'd want to know about it. And so that's an awesome opportunity for you to control your reputation. Uh, associate with strong brands and uh, engage with uh, preferred vendors. As we mentioned earlier, you know, hitching to uh, high caliber loan officers and title reps, people that are going to help you put your best foot forward. Uh, you know, encourage positive online communities and charities. Touched a little bit about that a minute ago on the last slide. Um, what are you doing to help with nonprofits? Uh, maybe you're featuring a, a director at a local food bank and you're again establishing um, your knowledge of the community and that food bank in the community that services. Uh, join closed Facebook groups. This is a huge one, huge for 2020. Facebook, I don't know if anyone caught the Super Bowl. Facebook took out two ads that were not about just Facebook. They were specific about closed groups. That's $5.5 million <laughs> an ad. So they are serious about closed groups. Closed groups is going to be a huge part. It is a huge part of the Facebook experience. And it's a natural fit for real estate agents because a lot of closed groups consist of neighborhoods, subdivisions. Uh, I live up in Norterra, so it's Norterra 85085. Uh, get into those closed groups. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Get into the closed groups and start establishing yourself as someone who has high value content, who knows the community and shares it in that closed group. They may not have a need now, but they will definitely look for your content when it's high value. And when they do have a need, they'll remember you. And that at the end of the day is the goal here is to be memorable and to build relationships. And you can do that through the use of, of Facebook closed groups. So highly recommend that. Um, dues. Last one, stand out without selling. It doesn't always have to be about real estate. It doesn't always have to be just listed, just sold. It can be more than that. And it should be more than that. Because when I talk about high value content, this is an opportunity for you to share lifestyle pieces, feature a community member. Uh, heck, I know one agent who stopped and interviewed uh, the crossing guard lady uh, at the local high school. She's been there for like umpteen years. Everyone knows her, but no one has ever really stopped to talk to her. And so uh, they did an interview with the crossing guard lady and, and just... Why do you love the community? How long have you lived here? Do you have children that went to the school? What is it about the school? You know, again, you're using that content to establish yourself as a voice and as a trusted agent in the neighborhood. And then, of course, uh, be more than a realtor. You know, be a connector. 
be the in the know agent. Um, it, it, it's about building relationships. And through the use of social media, you can do that. And when they have a need, they will remember you for sure. So don'ts. I don't, I don't want to get too negative, but uh, try not to be cocky when it comes to social media. You know, it's good to hustle hard. It's good to uh, also stay humble and show that, you know, you're being successful. Highly recommend celebrating your small accomplishments, but uh, try, uh, try to avoid uh, tooting your own horn. Uh, and it's okay to share successes. Just try not to label yourself with any weird kitschy names, uh, guru, master, ninja, doctor. Um, you know, there, I see this a lot. You're a real estate professional and this is what you do. Uh, keep it, keep it simple. Uh, and, uh, and of course I know, I know I have to say this, it's a no brainer, but don't post sensitive material, uh, whether it's your clients, please, hopefully not. Uh, but make sure to keep all your personal information off there as well. Um, and, and do yourself a favor and audit your personal Facebook page, make sure that your privacy settings are locked in. And I know a lot of us are working from home right now more than ever. And this is nothing new for real estate agents. Many of us work out of a home office. But uh, when I say uh, posting sensitive, sensitive material, and we, we spoke about smart devices in the home, something to take into consideration right now more than ever, since so many of us are working from home. Um, remember, those devices are always recording. And so if you're having conversations with clients, loan officers, and you're discussing and having, uh, you're talking about you know, finances, money, personal information, uh, you name it. Just be mindful that if there's a smart device in the home and you haven't gone in and turned off that always recording, uh, that 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 is recording that information. So, you know, I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not thinking like you know something bad's going to happen. But just be mindful since we're all working from home that your smart device is recording. And if we're talking about clients' information, it could be a possibility um, uh, of an issue. Um, and, and there is truth to that because trust me, if you start talking about buying a new car today, in a few weeks, you're going to start seeing crazy ads from Toyota and Honda and everybody else. So they are listening. <laughs> um, I always figured, try to figure that out. Like we were wanted to buy a bounce house for Christmas or for, uh, for last summer. And I, we were talking about bounce houses and how much and a lot of those keywords, the device hears. And then it was no surprise that a week later on Amazon, I started seeing listings for bounce houses, running ads. So, yeah, so it's 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 all uh, it's all uh, pretty funny out there. Uh, last one: don't be afraid uh, to. Um, or oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> don't be the friend who overshares. I know I, I joked about this a minute ago, but try not to overshare too much. Like I said, be consistent, but don't be constant. Uh, we don't have to uh, uh, use our Facebook, our social media as a diary. You don't need to stop every minute and share everything that's happening. Use social media to highlight the highlights, to point out the highlights of your business, your transactions, and and the feel good moments and the and the help that you're providing to your clients. And most importantly, don't be negative. I know it's hard. It's it, I, I get myself pulled in a lot to conversations and and we want to discuss everything. And I've learned that. You rarely, especially when it comes to politics, no one ever leaves the conversation having changed their mind. <laughs> so try to keep it positive. Avoid getting sucked into any negativity. Like at the end of the day, that will make you most appealing and it will put your best brand forward. Whoop. So bottom line is your presence on social media is a highly conspicuous part of how you market yourself to the world. That's the bottom line. Bottom line is, is using social media to put your best foot forward and to have a strong digital presence. And so I put together a couple of recommended apps for you guys to really elevate your social media content with your brand. Uh, you know, once you've answered those questions about your brand, once you've decided that you, you, you've got a you've got a whole strategy that's ready to rock and roll, here's a couple apps that you can use to elevate your graphic design. And then, in fact, I teach a Canva class. If you were on last week, you heard it. Um, but uh, these apps will help you create high value and, and, and high resolution, uh, high quality content that you can use with all your social media. Um, most importantly, uh, when it comes to Instagram and Facebook, the most appealing and engaged content statistically has shown is high quality video, high quality content, graphic images, you name it. And again, this being a highly visual industry, they are a natural fit. So always remember that, um, you know, you've got a smart device in your hand with your mobile device. You can take really good photos and just stop and take a few moments to use any one of these apps to help you elevate your marketing. And um, think, uh, oh yeah, so that that's pretty much all I have. I didn't see any questions come in. So if you do have any after the fact, feel free to email me again. It's Keith at WestUSA.com. Um, happy to answer those questions. If there's anything I can do to help you 
whether it's graphic design, content, copywriting, content creation, uh, you're stuck on what to do about a specific topic, I'm happy to help out. That's why we're here. My next class coming up on April 1st, again at 10 a.m., uh, Facebook Basics. We're going to walk everyone through creating a business page and then building out the page. Uh, and then how do we find friends, family? How do we connect and build an audience? We'll talk about best times of the day to use um, uh, Facebook, when to post your content, using the scheduler, uh, a, a number of different aspects. And we'll go through all the different ways that you can use Facebook for your marketing. Um, and yes, you can get these slides and, and this will be a recorded version actually at the end of this. So once it's recorded, locked and loaded on YouTube, I will throw all these uh, onto the closed groups and then you can obviously uh, deal with it as you see. But yeah, I definitely will have these slides available for you uh, later this afternoon. Uh, and then again, keep an eye on the eighth uh, smart video with your smartphone. Again, content creation, video, video, video is huge. Uh, whether you're comfortable in front of the camera, uh, there's an opportunity for you to still use video and not have to be in front of the camera. Uh, I will go through many different aspects of how you can use video and implement that into your branding and marketing strategy. And of course, you can register for all those at easyrealestatetraining.com. If you haven't already, uh, please feel free to share any past videos with uh, anyone that you may know who you think would benefit from it. We'd love to have more on the show for sure. Um, what do we got here? Friday. This Friday coming up, that's the 27th, we have a virtual lunch and learn. I love this. My, uh, probably Weinstein's idea. Very creative. Uh, the very bottom there, I'll have you skip through the content there. B-Y-O-L. Bring your own lunch. Again, just, uh, you know, Taking advantage of uh, these these um, this this time that we're in, there's no reason why we can't start stop. There's no reason why we can't continue to learn and keep moving forward. And so Mike and Mindy, Mike Weinstein and Mindy Thompson, uh, have a virtual lunch and learn coming up on Friday the 27th at 11:30. And again, talking about how we can um, how they can help you your and your business thrive during this historic time. I mean, you know, again, it's a very uh, it's a very funky time right now. We totally get it. And they're going to walk you through uh, creating a great marketing message, uh, getting your mindset built around your business, and then obviously helping you generate leads and to take your business to the next level. So I uh, wanted to point that out. Feel free to keep an eye on our social media platforms to register for that event. And uh, you guys will be all set to go. Um, question coming in. How do we get the... We're going to have to expand that window so I can read the whole question one second here. <laughs> all right. Let me see here. What's the whole question? There we go. Stretch it out. Pull the box. Or whatever. I'll give you that answer real quick. Uh, but of course, like all social media, I'm on social media too. Love to connect with you. Um, how do we get the link for this? Yes, for Mindy's show. Um, I'm going to say, Kelly, I hope you are on one of our closed groups. The link is at the very bottom. It's not a hyperlink, so I do apologize for that. Um, I posted it on all of our closed group and on our main page on, on Facebook. Hopefully that will get you a your answer. Kelly, if not, go ahead and email me, Keith at WestUSA.com. As soon as this uh, webinar is over, I will send that link out to you. And of course, anybody else who, um, uh, who um, may be interested. And then uh, how do you turn off the always recording? Always recording. That's a great question. Mary, I am sorry, but I don't know. Yeah, let's see. What, oh, was the Canva class you did last week, was it recorded? Yes, it was recorded. Um, it's on all of our closed Facebook groups as a recording. And uh, if you don't find it there or you're not a West USA agent, email me, Mary. I'll be happy to send that to you and uh, get you going there. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I'm also on social media, so feel free to, to uh, uh, jump on there, connect with me. I would love to see what you guys are putting out there. And of course, we're always just trying to grow our network. And so I'll be sure to follow you back. Uh, well, with that, I really appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we will have another, uh, another webinar on next um, next uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. So have a great day. Stay positive and I uh, wish you the best. Thank you.